Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrapcraftastic, and I'm going to show you how to customize or personalize the template for the page markers that I have in my shop at scrapcraftastic.com. Now, once you purchase and download the file and open it in Silhouette Studio, this is what it looks like. And I've included two blank versions of the page mark so that you can customize however you like. So um, this top one allows you to put the letters or words or graphic or whatever you want on top. And this bottom one, you can put the words or letters on the inside. So first, we're going to work with this one. And what I like to do is if I have the original file, I like to leave it as is, not necessarily work from that. So I'm going to copy this one. Um, that allows you to add the topper to it to a new file. So I'm just going to copy, file copy, or control C, or edit copy, or control C, and copy that. Then I'm going to create a new file and paste, or edit paste, control V, or edit paste into the new document. Now I'm going to go ahead and save because that's what I do when I create a new document. I save as soon as possible and I'm going already just going to rename a file I had previously and replace that file. So now I'm going to again make a copy of this, control C and then control V or command if you're on the Mac. I'm on a PC, so. Um, and keep this one off on the side, just in case. I always like to have an extra copy in case I make a mistake on the one that I'm working on. And also, I have the version in the original file, but that way I don't have to keep going back to the original file. I have it right here in my same workspace. So back on the artboard, I am going to go ahead and write out or type out the word that I want to be on top of oops, my page mark. Now it's best to use a thicker letter. If you're using a script, try to use a thicker script. You can also add outline to it to um, give it more weight, but it's better to have a, a thicker stroke on your font. So I'm going to start with impact because that's one of the, well, I guess I could just type it in, um, one of the thicker fonts that I know of. Oops, it would help if I select my letters first. Let's try that again. So as you can see, this is very a very thick stroke on this font. And let's go ahead and fill it in so that we can see what we're working with. I'm going to turn the stroke off. Okay. And so I will just position that right on top. And resize to fit the way I want it to appear on top of my page mark. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, you want this, the bottom of your letters need to touch or slightly overlap onto the base of the page mark. So everything is good there. Now, all I need to do here is select both of my items, the topper and the bottom go to the modify menu and choose weld and what that does is it combines my letters to the base so let me undo that so before they're separate it's two different things okay and if we look at it in the cut settings you can see it if i were to cut this like this 
it would be t several separate things plus all of these little pieces where it overlaps would cut so all of these letters would cut individual individually plus everything that's outlined in red would cut individually i hope that makes sense so that's why we go to the well tool select both items and weld them together so now it's one all one piece and if you go over here and look at the cut you'll see that everything is welded together and it's all going to be one complete piece so that's how you would do it with basic letters now when you're working with a script it's going to be a little more complicated so let's go over here and copy another copy of this over so let's go back so that we're not showing our lines so now i'm just going to go to my text tool and type out my name again and i'm going to highlight this and i'm going to go with a script font and i think i want to use brush script it's not a very heavy font but it's one of the heavier fonts and like i said you want to try and go heavy um as heavy as possible because if you have really thin um letters or strokes on your letters then you're going to have problems with them holding up and tearing off they'll be easy to tear off and it may not cut as well either so i'm just setting this down to see what it looks like i could probably add a little stroke to this to make the letters a little thicker so i'm going to change my stroke color to black and then i'm going to increase the stroke or line thickness to two and stroke is stroke is i'm, I'm saying stroke because i'm used to using adobe illustrator it's called line thickness here so i'm changing the line thickness to two points and it was at zero so as you can see it made my letters a little bit thicker but you can still see the details inside of the loops and whatnot so let's move this up and i'm going to look at this as far as looking at the cut line so when you look at it in the cut settings view you can see that each letter is an individual letter and we need them to all be together. So what I'm going to do is once I have this set to the way I want it, I'll go back over here to the modify panel and I'm just gonna have my letters selected for now and weld them together. So let's go back and have a look. Okay, so now that we have welded the letters together, we're going to go back to the weld panel and we're going to detach lines. What that did is take our stroke off, as you can see. So we detached the lines. So let me put this back. Now we're going to go back and weld again. This way it's going to weld our stroke and the inside of the letters. So now when we look at it in the cut, the cut lines are on the very edge instead of on the inside of the stroke or on the very edge of the letters. So now our word, our script is ready to go. So you just align this on your page mark how you want it to appear. You can make it bigger, smaller, uh, be, be aware of how much overhang you're going to have. You want to keep those types of things in mind position accordingly but you want every letter to at least be touching the base of the page mark so i'm going to position it like that and select both the topper and the bottom the base of the page mark and i'm going to go back to my well and weld those together so now you have one piece and if you look at it in your cut screen, you can see the red line where it's gonna cut goes all the way around. Now it's up to you as far as these little openings underneath, if you want it for 
to keep the um, letters legible and to clarify the letters, you can leave that or you can fill that in. It's really a personal preference, I think. I'll just copy this one, do a copy of it, and I'll show you how to go back and take those out if you want to. I don't know if this is the right way. This is just the way that I figured it out. So for any shape like this, you use your edit points tool here and you go select the point and then you can hit delete point and it goes around and deletes all of them. See, you don't get the same effect of the letter when you do that. So I'm going to undo that and leave it like it was. Let's see. And I think that would be a problem. Let's delete these. Okay. So need to delete this one. So I don't really like the way that looks, but if that's, you know, it depends on your name too. Um, but if you like the way that looks, then that's the way you can do it. And I probably would have played around with the C a little bit more so that you still got some of the curve in there, but that's just really up to you how you want to do it but that is how you can customize um, the page mark and you can also add a graphic to it I'll do a quick version like that so we're getting pretty our page is getting pretty filled up so these are graphics from that I was playing well some of these are graphics that I was playing with from the recolor app as you can tell if you've been watching my videos You'll know that I really like that app and I use it a lot. Um, I like a lot of the, the graphics that they have there. So I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take her and copy her over. Okay. Now, this is this setup, the way I have this set up now is if you're just printing on a basic piece of paper, this is not set up for print and cut at this point in time. Now you could set this up for print and cut, and I'm going to show you how to do that with this one. So I'm going to add her here, and we would want her to print on the actual page marker. So to do that, I'm going to change this to white. Oh, let's do a little gray so you can see it. Let's see if we can match her shirt. So it's going to be, or maybe we'll do red to match her hat. Nope, the gray looks better. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I already have a cut mark around her, and the page mark already has its cut mark. So I need to turn her cut mark on. Just click cut. So I'm just going to select her cut mark and the page mark. And we're going to weld those together. Now, it looks like she disappeared, but what they did is just put the cut marks in front. So I'm going to arrange and send that to the back. So it's object, arrange, send to back. If you print and cut this as is, it's going to cut her with a gray background around her. If you don't want the gray background around her, there's a way around that, but it's, it can get pretty complicated. What you could do is change this to white, change her background to white. I don't mean for this to get this complicated and involved, but you would change it to white. Let's go where we can see where it's cutting at. We're going to turn the cut off 
for this extra piece. Let's copy it. So you can see when you drag it onto the artboard, the cut is on for it. We're going to turn the cut off for that. And we're going to place that on top. And you could have, can line this up using the alignment tools. But I'm just going to zoom in and line it up. Okay. And then we'll go back and move it to the back. Object, arrange, send to back. And go back and change the color again like we did initially. So what that does is it gives you a white background around her and it'll give you back your gray background for your base. Oops. So we're going to group all of that together and we're going to go look at it in our cut file. So you can see it's going to still give you white background around her and it's going to give you your gray base and and give you a, a little bit of margin around her as well so again i didn't mean for that to get so complicated but i did want to show you you can put objects on top of it um you can use other graphics on top however you choose and yep so that's it if you have any questions let me know and I will try to answer them for you below. I'll also leave a link to this, to the file for the template below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.